watercolor paint. It's what watercolor painting's all about, right? If you don't have paint, you can't paint. Get to the point, Steve. Okay, I will. But you want the best paint you can buy, don't you? And sometimes those expensive artist grade brands might break the bank. Well, I got help for you today. I got a little bit of help, just a little bit. I can, I can help them. Well, hello, minders from across the watercolor universe. How's everybody doing? My name is Steve Mitchell, and this is the Mind of Watercolor YouTube channel, and we are talking about, of course, watercolor. Sorry, I didn't catch that. I don't have any idea what kind of an accent that was. Anyway, so what we're looking at today is the Paul Rubens watercolors, and I'm a little bit late to the party on this one. But let me kind of set the table for you, as it were. I usually use high-quality, well-recognized name brand, artist-grade paint. And it's never been my desire to get into reviewing all the brands out there. There are a bunch of channels out there that do a much better job, both artist-grade and student-grade, because there is a ton of them. I mean, just a ton. So many. But when something important comes along or something I think might benefit, you know, I, I will try to make an effort. And I think that the Paul Rubens watercolors fill kind of an important slot. Doesn't mean there aren't good uh, student grade watercolors out there. And I am asked all the time, so what can I buy that is uh, a better value? You know, I have limited funds. Okay, first of all, a bit of advice, and it may make a difference as to whether you buy artist grade paints or not buy fewer colors and higher quality. Higher quality is more important than a lot of colors, especially when you're starting out. That said, what about some value brands? High grade value brands, ones that are considered artist grade, are pretty close to artist grade, but are a better, better value, they cost less. Paul Rubens is one of the ones that fits in that category. Before I get into the Paul Rubens look and review, I'll mention two others. White Knights is quite often considered a really good value brand and yet professional artist grade quality. I don't have any White Knights, so I can't show them to you. Reviews that I trust usually put them really high on the value scale in terms of at or near artist quality and yet a reasonable price. Another one that I can recommend, and this I do have quite a few of, and love is the uh, Renaissance. I love this paint. Uh, it's not widely available. Uh, it's, a, it's a Polish paint. One lady here in the States is an exclusive dealer of these and she sells them on Etsy. I'll put the link below. But their tubes are very reasonably priced and it's a high quality paint. I haven't talked about these in a while, but I've done some reviews and several paintings, uh, painting demos here on YouTube where I've used these paints. So high quality brands do exist. And you can get at or near artist grade, professional grade quality without spending a lot of money. By all reports, Paul Rubens watercolors also fit that category. This is a fourth generation paint. This is their 24 color set. They've created this line and uh, they, they have bigger sets. And they have gone back and reformulated the set, I guess, four times. I guess that's what fourth generation means. And I'm anxious to take a look at them uh, because they've just been getting really good reviews. And I mean, the price is very, very reasonable. These, this set here is a five milliliter tube set. It's a good introductory set. At the time of this video, I think this set was, oh, maybe between 30 and $40. Uh, for artist grade paint, that's unheard of for 25 color, 24 colors, even if they're five milliliter tubes. So really a great value. Now, Paul Rubens company is a Chinese company, just so you'll know. And you can feel about that however you want to feel about that. Uh, what I do find interesting, though, is the company is about 15 years old, and they set out basically to create a Chinese brand. I mean, a brand that was reputable and known for good paint as a Chinese brand. So this is not like a knockoff company. There's a ton of those companies out there. That's not really the case, at least uh, from what I could tell with Paul Rubens. They set out for, in the beginning to create a name and a brand for themselves uh, that's recognizable. And I think for the most part, they've succeeded at that. 
I've only tried these at one other time, and it was a pan set that I had, and I was actually very impressed. They were pans, but uh, I thought they were great paints. What I'm going to do today is we'll look at all the colors. I will swatch them out, and I will set up a small palette. And when all of that is said and done, I'll do a quickie uh, spontaneous painting for you. My favorite way to try out new paints. I'm going to be swatching in my painter's color diary, and I am not a paint swatching channel. So we're gonna go through this quickly. Swatching is an adventure and discovery, is it not? <laughs> Maestro, how about some swatching adventure music? I'll catch you on the flip side. All right, well, I am done swatching this out and let us make a few observations. Just a few naming things uh, and pigment notes. I have a brown number down here and it really looks for all intents and purposes like a sepia. Uh, I have an Imgram sepia that looks very similar to that and it is not a raw umber pigment, it is three pigments. PB15-1, which is a phthalo blue red shade, I think. PBR7, PBK9. So uh, a brown, a black, and a blue. And I went ahead and copied down these little squares. You can see the black ones are the opaque colors. And then there are transparent and semi-transparent. The vast majority of them were transparent or semi-transparent. Burnt Sienna, uh, that was not a traditional Burnt Sienna PBR pigment. It was instead PR101, which is a red iron oxide, and black, PBK9, an ivory black. So that was a little odd. Let's see, what other naming things? Uh, uh, Berlin Blue was really Prussian Blue. Indigo, uh, pretty typical for an indigo. It looks like Payne's Gray, and some indigos do. And most indigo is a convenience color and made up of two pigments. So this is PB15-1 and PB66. Olive Green oh, uh, was a convenience color made of two pigments. PO62, PG7, May Green, and that's pretty common for an olive. May Green was also a convenience color made of two pigments. That's pretty common. Ultramarine Blue, uh, they called French Blue, but it was just standard PB29. I think all total here, there were five multi-pigment colors. The rest were single pigment colors. So uh, it's hard to complain about that. I was impressed. I was impressed with how they they went down, how they acted, the vibrancy. I mean, they acted pretty much like a artist grade or professional grade paint, which is what they claim. The price though is incredible. 
Uh, they are very much priced like a student grade paint. Uh, I need to pallet these, so I'm going to put them in this small little uh, plastic pallet. This only holds 20 colors, so I'm going to just eliminate four of them, and that won't be hard to do because not all of these colors do I need. So right away, I'm going to eliminate black. I think I'm going to eliminate their burnt sienna. I'm going to eliminate CAD yellow light. I'm not a CAD fan. These two yellows are so similar. I think I'm going to eliminate their Quinn Rose because their Quinn Rose and Quinn Maroon are almost identical. And I like the Quinn Maroon here a little better. So I think those will be the four that I do not palette. And I generally do this in a color wheel fashion. All right, so I have switched. I went ahead and included the burnt sienna. I wasn't going to originally, but that's because I had two oranges that were too similar. All right, this is what we're gonna do. So let's pour these bad boys. And there we have it. I had no separation in these tubes except for the Naples yellow. Other than that, everything poured fine. And we will let this uh, open air dry for, uh, usually takes a few days. All right, I've got uh, some paper tape down here and I'm gonna do a little painting for you. This is the Paul Rubens paper they sent with the paints. Now I'm not really doing a review of this paper so much. I'm willing to try it out for this painting. Um, I've actually already done a test. This is supposedly 100% cotton paper. So far, not a real fan. I won't be saying a whole lot about this paper. Uh, mainly my purpose, of course, in this video is to test the paint. Since filling out this, these have had a chance to set up. They set up really quick. Uh, a couple of days is really all it took. What I want to do first is just a complete wet and wet test as I do this spontaneous painting. I'm just going to get my Sterling Edwards brush here, which is a good pre wetter. But again, my main purpose here is to see how these paints flow. Give it a little bit of time to soak in some more. And I'm going to stay very limited with the palette. All right, well, that was a satisfying painting session, and I really have nothing to say about these paints, at least not in the negative. Not yet. Maybe time will tell and kind of pinpoint a few anomalies, but I don't see them, and they didn't act 
weird in any way. And sometimes that's the best thing you can say about any paint. I think they're well worth the money and a great value. And I do recommend them. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you patrons for your continued and enthusiastic support of this channel. It means so much. We'll see everyone in the next video. Bye-bye.